And then there were four. The Bengals and Chiefs will battle it out at Arrowhead for the right to represent the AFC in Super Bowl 56. For Cincy, they entered the season with 150 to 1 odds to win it all, with a projected win total of just six and a half games. But it's been all about defying the odds all season long for the Bengals. Joe Burrow made a miraculous recovery from that torn ACL and looks like he'll be one of the faces of the franchise and the league for the next decade or more. His stellar play led Cincy to their first AFC North title since the 2015 season. And if they're closing out two games late to start the playoffs, the Bengals now find themselves on the doorstep of reaching their first Super Bowl in 33 years. But internally, this is something they expected all along. I'm tired of the underdog narrative. And we're a really, really good team. We're here to make noise. On the other side, it looked like the Chiefs season was on life support against the Bills in the divisional round. Down three with just 13 seconds to go. But two people that never lost faith, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. And when it's grim, be the grim reaper. I mean, go get it. So he did that. After pulling off the win in overtime in an instant playoff classic, the Chiefs are now one win away from reaching their third consecutive Super Bowl. Will Mahomes have another magical performance in front of one of the most raucous crowds in the NFL? Or can Joey Franchise keep transforming a franchise that is still searching for its first Lombardi? We're going to find out Sunday on CBS. Let's welcome in the ultimate two people to give us a preview of the AFC Championship. Former Bengals great TJ Hushmanzada, also longtime Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson. Uh, both Pro Bowlers. I know this could be smack talk the whole time, so we're going to try to talk a little football first. TJ, I want to start with you and the Bengals because when we came into the season, I mean, it was just, hey, the Bengals hadn't even won a playoff game since 1990. Now they are in the AFC Championship. What, what does this mean to this team and just the city of Cincinnati in general? Obviously, everything. I mean, 31 years since they won the playoff game. And just two years ago, they were 2-14. and 14. You get the number one pick in Joe Burrow. And I thought he would win a playoff game on his rookie contract. I didn't think it would be in his second year. And so the fact that they are here in this situation, two years ago, they were 2-14. and 14. This offense is carrying them. Defense carried them last week. But I'm concerned uh, that the offensive line, they gave up nine sacks, and it's not like the Chiefs don't have dogs up front. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, so we got the newbies kind of on one side. On the other side, you have Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs, their fourth straight AFC championship. Derek, I mean, I, I think we kind of felt that in that last game against the Bills. I mean, it did come down to the wire, but you're like, look, this is the Chiefs. This is what they do now, it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Pat Mahomes was not taking no for an answer. I mean, they didn't blink, not even with 13 seconds left on the clock. And man, every time I think about that time, I mean, it's, you know, during that game, it was all kind of emotion, especially from two minutes uh, on down uh, to the to the end of the overtime but I tell you what man it's just something about um, having that playoff experience being a, a quarterback with that much grit and that much uh, um, confidence especially having Andy Reid I mean you talk about situational football I mean they did it at his best with 13 seconds left on the clock and uh, uh, now they're in a the big game they're in Arrowhead uh, but they're going to get a, a pretty good uh, uh, a team that, that they got beat by late in the year. And uh, the good thing about this, I'll tell you what, whatever we did uh, with Burrow and, and, and Chase at that time, that uh, we're not going to do that defense ever again. So they, they're going to get something new, not what we did when we played them in Cincinnati for sure. Okay, I want to build on that because obviously, as you mentioned, we did see the Bengals beat the Chiefs earlier this month. Derek, we'll start with you since you started about this. I mean, what are the difficulties, or is it easier in some regards playing a team again more than once in a season? Yeah, it's always hard. It's always hard when you play a team twice, if you play them two or three times, because you, you know each other even more. That's why they say even in a division, when you play a division opponent, because you know each other really, really well. And I'm sure 
Um, um, the Bengals know the Chiefs, and the Chiefs know the Bengals now. But I tell you what, man, uh, these playoffs have been very, very exciting, and I can't, I cannot wait to Sunday night, man. This is or Sunday evening, I should say. This is going to be one heck of a game. I mean, Burrow, man, he's he's he, they call him Joe Cool or whatever, man. I I, I ain't gonna lie, I like him. I'm a fan. Uh, uh, hopefully, he doesn't he doesn't do too good this coming uh, uh, this coming up week. But I tell you what, man, uh, my hats off to to the Bengals and getting back on track. I mean, it's been 31 years. That's a that's a big deal, real big deal. I, I look at it from the perspective of the Bengals. Like, you, you go to the Chiefs and Bills game. The Bills have been, or the Chiefs have been in three FC Championship games in a row. They felt confident up until they had zero seconds on the clock that we're going to get this done. And, and so when, when you've had the success that they've had, why wouldn't you have that belief? And, and now we talk Chiefs Bengals. I played in Arrowhead Stadium. Arrowhead Stadium, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which used to be the Superdome, playing in Seattle and playing in Minnesota, by far and away the loudest stadiums I've ever played in. <laughs> That's going to present an obstacle for the Bengals that they've never played in anything like this before, and, and they'll see that. But the saving grace is, and Derek can attest to this, when you just beat a team – within the last month, confidence level is through the roof. We They feel good about it. And not only did they not beat them, they were down 14 points. I don't know if people remember. They had to overcome a lot of adversity that game. They were down 14 points and came back to win it. I thought Spagnola made some bad calls defensively. You don't play cover zero, third and 26. He did that. They won't do that again. And so the chess match will start from the first snap. Who can adjust the best, the quickest, and just make the best adjustments for the game. Um, both teams will be confident. The way the Chiefs won and the way the Bengals beat the Chiefs before, it's going to be a really good game. You talked about how loud it is at Arrowhead. Obviously, that last game against the Chiefs was in Cincinnati. We heard Joe Burrow this week saying it gets way louder in the SEC than it does NFL stadiums. I mean, both of you went to He's great. He's going to find that out. That's that what true. I want to know. What do you think? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> TJ, start with you and Derek, you follow. I, like I just said, and I don't know if Derek's played in those stadiums. He played a long time, so I'm sure he played in every stadium you can play in. The old Metrodome in Minnesota was loud. The Saints stadium is extremely loud. Seattle's home field advantage in Kansas City. Those four, it, there's nothing like it. It's loud all game. You can't prepare for that in practice. When they played the Chiefs earlier, obviously they did play in Cincinnati. But you cannot prepare for this crowd noise that they're going to face. And the fans are going to be into it because the Bengals just beat the Chiefs. But I know it's 100,000 in the SEC, but this type of noise is just going to be different. Yeah, absolutely. TJ is exactly, exactly right, man. I, I played in Kansas City for 13 years, and I tell you what, it is no uh, home field advantage like uh, Arrowhead Stadium. I mean, you got the Seattles and stuff there. You got the 12th man, and they're, they are loud. Don't get me wrong, but I'll tell you what, it's something about that sea of red. Uh, I've experienced it personally every single week uh, for 13 years, and I'll tell you what, man, uh, uh, it, you know, uh, this, this is going to be hard for the Bengals. It, it really is. It's going to be tough. Uh, obviously, they're capable to, to win this game, but at the same time, uh, the odds are, you know, uh, our side when it comes to making sure we can get the quarterback, you know, can't hear and all that stuff. They'll try to uh, emulate that in practice by playing loud music and stuff, but it's just nothing like it. You just can't even hear yourself think when you're out there on that field, and that's going to help our defense because last time we, we played Cincinnati, uh, we didn't have a good showing, so we need to show up big this week. So a better showing for the Chiefs defense. And if I'm, I mean, I, I'm a little hungry after watching Joe Burrow get sacked nine times against the Titans. But Derek, that Chiefs defense, how do you find success in pressuring Joe Burrow this time, unlike last time? You got to, you got to make sure, you got to make sure you, you, you keep pressuring them, get them in third and long, because that's when, that's when your crowd comes to life. That's when your crowd comes like. If you let uh, uh, Mixon and those guys. Uh, running the ball up and down the uh, up and down the um, field, and let Joe Burrow get the get the moving, and him swagging with Chase down the field and throwing long passes. That crowd is not going to be a factor at all. 
But at the same time, if we can get him in third and long, you got Frank Clark and Chris Jones, who's a you know absolute monster. Uh, watching that game last week, watching uh, Cincinnati get sacked nine times, you know, we're licking our chops. But at the same time, we got to go back and look at the film and say, all right, this is what we did wrong. We have to eliminate that. Don't do that defense. Don't do that scheme. Do something totally different. Put two people on chase, like right off the bat, take him out the game, make somebody else win the game for you. Uh, I think we'll be okay. TJ, you're a big fan of Jamar Chase there. I mean, he's talking about shutting him down or at least trying to. I mean, Joe, Joe Burrow's got some great weapons, including Jamar Chase. What do you need to see from them in this game? The, the thing about the Bengals is it's not a one-man show. It, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And, and so Spagnola, like, a Tiger's not going to change his stripes. You know, no pun intended. <laughs> the, the Chiefs play defense a certain way because they know if they don't, Teams are going to run the ball down their throat. So they man up. They put eight in the box. They want to stop the run. And so when you do that, you leave your corners somewhat on an island. Go ahead and double chase. That's okay. T. Higgins can play. He can get it done. Tyler Boyd can get it done. Oh, let's say we drop back in a too high shell. The Bengals can run the ball with Mixon. So they can beat you with more guys than just Jamar Chase. You can go Tyler Boyd. You can go C.J. Uzuma. You can go T. Higgins. We can go Joe Mixon. The concern is can you block Chris Jones and Frank Clark? If you can do that, we got a really good game on our hands and I favor the Bengals because we just don't know who is gonna be the guy. We know with the Chiefs, we trying to get the ball to Kelsey and Tyree Kill. Those are the two guys that's gonna beat you. With the Bengals, T Higgins can beat you, Jamar Chase can beat you, Joe Mixon can beat you, Tyler Boyd can beat you. Protect the quarterback, we got a hell of a game on our hands. So if we're not watching Joe Burrow, we're not watching Jamar Chase, uh, TJ, we'll start with you. And Derek, we've asked you the same thing about your team as well. An under-the-radar player to watch. TJ, who are you looking at? I'm going to go I'm, uh, I'm gonna go under-the-radars players. I'm going to give you T. Higgins and, and C.J. Zuma because Derek played a long time in, in the league. He, he knows this. They're not going to let Jamar Chase wreck him like he did last game. A at least I hope so. I mean, <laughs> these coaches, they do all this game planning. You would think uh, they wouldn't let the best players beat them. And, and so I'm going to say T. Higgins and C.J. Zuma will be wild cards in the passing game if the Chiefs devote their attention to Jamar Chase, which I believe they should. Well, you know what? I, I would have to say uh, uh, Pringle, number 13, and number 11, and Demarcus Robinson. You talk about those guys. They don't, they don't, they don't get much love, uh, but I tell you what. Man, uh, when you when you're gonna they're gonna double. This is how everybody's been playing the Chiefs. You know, play them two man. You got to play them two man. You don't want to get beat deep, and you got to make sure Tyreek Hill is you know does not get behind you, and make sure you get some hands on Kelsey. But those other receivers, they got to come through. Nicole Hardman, they got to come through. It's just Nico Hardman. It just it just has to happen. Um, not saying that they have to be superstars, but they're gonna have the one on one opportunities. And I'm just telling you, man. Even last week, the Bills they knew who the two best players was. And they still couldn't stop them. So hopefully, uh, uh, Cincinnati Cincinnati tears a page out of out of the Bills, who who's a pretty good defense, by the way. You know, top three defense in the league, uh, but they couldn't stop our guys. And I tell you what, man, Pat Mahomes is he just he, he he's he's it's not a one man show with him either. He's he's going to get everybody a ball. They're going to run. He's going to run the ball when he needs to. And uh, uh, he's just a winner. At the end of the day, he's a winner. And I just can't see. Cincinnati pulling this off. Obviously, I'm biased, but this is this is going to be tough. This is going to be a great game, though. Great game. You guys have been so. And you know what? Can I? Oh yeah, Amanda, go ahead, Can go I ahead. give some love to Derek side of the ball? You know, we we all talking <laughs> offense. If, if on the defensive side, if Jesse Bates, Trey Hendrickson up front, Trey Hendrickson gets mm -hmm. that pressure. Jesse Jesse Bates, you're that back end defender as a safety. I believe those two guys will, will play a big part in this game if the Bengals are to be successful. So you've given love to one another. You've been very polite through this whole thing. I want a score prediction. <laughs> and why from each of you? TJ, we'll start with you. And maybe I'm picking with the heart over the head, but I, I like the Bengals to win. That, that confidence level in playing sports is so much more than just your physical ability. It's that self-belief. They just did it.
I believe they're going to do it again. 31 to 28, the Bengals will be out here in L.A. in a Super Bowl. Mm, I like that. I like that. I tell you what, uh, TJ said it said it right. Um, sometimes, uh, um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more than about your physical ability. It's about that confidence, that swag going into the game. And uh, who has more swag <laughs> than the Chiefs right now going into Arrowhead Stadium with the AFC Championship on the line, going to the Super Bowl, going to L.A.? I mean, uh, 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 man, I, I, I just I, – I would have to say – 35 Chiefs, 24 Bengals. I just can't see them just being too close of a game. I think it'll get out of hand. Uh, not out of hand. I think it'll get get out of reach in the fourth quarter when that crowd uh, gets to going and uh, mess up that offense a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm praying. I'm praying. Look, last week was incredible. I can't imagine anything topping that, but this game could absolutely do it. As I said at the beginning, the two best people to talk about the AFC Championship, TJ, Derek, we appreciate it. Good luck to both of your teams. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. We appreciate you. Thank you. So there is your championship weekend schedule. You do get the Bengals at the Chiefs. That one. Sunday, 3 Eastern on CBS. And right after that, catch the 49ers at Rams. The Rams, a three and a half point home favorite. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.